I've tested a number of tablets on my channel before, and I've been collecting way too many of them to the point of no return. So when Ugi reached out to me to test a couple of their products, there is only one answer I could give. And welcome to my channel. Hope you're doing well. If you couldn't tell by the intro, this video is sponsored by Yugi. Or, or Yugi, I'm not quite sure. We'll go with Yugi. <laughs> they have a number of tablets available to buy, but the two that I am going to be talking about today is the U1600, which is an amazing display tablet I am <laughs> genuinely very impressed by, and the newest tablet in their collection, the Q8W. It's a pen tablet that is very beginner friendly while still having its uses in the professional world, and links for both of these tablets will be in the description box below if you're interested in either of them. And I'm very excited to share both of these tablets with you, but since it's the newest one available, let's talk about the Q8W first. Over the years of posting my art online, I've gotten a lot of questions about art, including how to get started with it, and that's not excluding newcomers to digital art. And the Q8W is the perfect tablet for anyone trying to get into digital art for the first time. Unboxing the tablet, we find the tablet itself. There aren't any other colors available, but personally, I really love the white and orange combo. I think it's a very striking looking tablet. And this orange part here actually lifts up where we can see the main features of this tablet. Firstly, there's a built-in pen storage for those of you like me who lose something the moment it leaves your hand and it also comes in handy if you want to bring this tablet out and about with you so that way your tablet stylus isn't just rummaging around in your bag and possibly getting lost. And you'll also notice these two little pegs here and they're not just to open and close the pen compartment but they also hold this clear sheet in place. You can actually remove it and place a sheet of paper underneath to trace your traditional sketches. It's definitely a feature I play with later so be sure to stay tuned for that. We also find some additional nib replacements and the cord for the tablet. Another main feature of this tablet is that it can connect to your devices via Bluetooth so this cord can be used to both connect the tablet to whatever you're using it on or to charge the tablet to be used wirelessly. And when it's fully charged, it has up to 10 hours of battery life. And you might have noticed that I said devices, and that's because this tablet isn't limited by just a computer or a laptop. It can also connect to your phone or your tablet and not, not, not the art drawing kind. <laughs> like an iPad or whatever. Not only can you use this to make art on your phone, but you can also use it for jotting down notes. To connect with Bluetooth, you hold the power button down to turn on the tablet, and then you press it three times to activate the pairing mode. And after that, all you have to do is go to your Bluetooth settings on whatever device you're pairing it to and connect it from there. That's all you need to do if you're connecting it to your phone or your tablet, but it's very important to remember to download the Q8W driver on your computer or laptop before you pair it. Just just to make sure that everything runs smoothly. I don't know what it would be like if you paired it and then downloaded the driver, but I would recommend downloading the driver first just to make it easier for yourself. And I also want to say that you can use this tablet without the Bluetooth feature with your phone or tablet, but the tablet itself only came with a USB a to C cable, and my phone charger is a double-ended USB-C cable, so I can use that to connect it to my phone if I need to. If you don't have one, then don't worry about it. I haven't had any sort of connection or lag issues when I was using the Bluetooth feature. It's just something that I thought I'd mention for anybody curious. And after that, it's just a matter of finding a drawing program to use. And whenever I'm using my phone in this video, I'm using a program called Infinite Painter. It costs roughly 10 US dollars, but there are tons of free-to-use drawing software available on mobile devices and tablets, and then whenever you see me drawing on my computer in this video, I am using Clip Studio Paint. And speaking of my computer, we move on over there, and the driver is incredibly easy to install. After downloading it from the Yugi website, all you have to do is follow the prompts on the screen, and it's recommended that you restart your computer after installing it to get the best results. And after that, you're all set. The main thing I wanted to test with this tablet was the experience of tracing traditional sketches onto your computer, so I made a quick drawing to test it out. The paper I used was fairly thin, and I wouldn't recommend using anything thicker than regular computer paper. I haven't tried anything thicker than that, but I'm just guessing that thinner paper works best, and I imagine thicker paper would get in the way of connecting the pen to the drawing thing. Screen? It's not a screen. The, the, you, the area. The thing where you put your pen that thing. But after my quick sketch, I just connected the tablet to my computer and got to work. On the Yugi website, it shows which art programs the tablets are compatible with, but both of the programs that I use in this video weren't listed on the site, but it still worked perfectly for me. If you use a drawing program that you don't see listed on the site, I honestly wouldn't worry about it in the slightest because I have had zero issues using 
either of these programs with these tablets. I'm not gonna lie, I was slightly skeptical <laughs> about the functionality of the clear tracing sheet. I was mostly worried that by putting the paper on top of the tablet interface, it would interfere with the pen to tablet connection, but when I was using it, it was like the paper wasn't even there. And after those worries were out of the way, it was just a matter of finishing my drawing. And this tracing sheet is a big reason why this tablet is so digital art beginner friendly. A very common tip given to new digital artists, and one I'm pretty sure I've given to you all myself before, is that to get used to using digital art, you draw something traditionally and then do the line art and colors digitally. And this helps you build the hand-eye coordination skills needed for any sort of digital art without risking the quality of your sketch. Since most newcomers to digital art aren't used to moving their hand and drawing something without looking down at what they're drawing, in other words, having to look up at your screen while your hand is moving on top of the tablet, it's definitely a bit of a learning curve. It's something that you have to get used to. As a result, your sketches can come out at a lower quality than you would have liked, which is why it's usually recommended to sketch something out traditionally and then bring that drawing onto your computer. And to do that, you would normally have to take a picture on your phone and upload it to your drive or scan your drawing, and then you would bring that into your drawing program. But having this clear sheet available to you helps take out those extra steps and it makes the process a lot faster, a little less confusing, and more accessible for digital art beginners. While I'm pretty sure everybody these days has access to a Google account where they have a Google Drive. My phone just went off. I w okay, I shouldn't say the G word too loudly. Anyways, <laughs> I'm pretty sure everybody has those things <clears throat> available to them. But some people prefer to scan their drawing to prevent any sort of warping to the proportions. But that said, not everyone has a scanner available, so this definitely helps make it a lot easier for people wanting to get into digital art. I've already talked about a lot of the pros, but to go over them again really quick, the tablet works both wired and wirelessly for any device that you're using it on. It has a long 10 hour long battery life, a bit redundant, but we'll go with it. Has built-in pen storage, is very portable, and has a clear sheet to trace traditional drawings. Most of the cons that I found with this tablet are honestly because I am a professional artist and I felt a little bit limited by the beginner-friendly nature of the tablet. If you are looking to get into digital art for the first time, I think this is the perfect tablet. And that's not to say that you can't use it if you're a professional, but if you are a professional, there are definitely a few things to keep in mind. The first one is that there wasn't any artist glove provided. You you don't technically need a drawing glove, and I'm pretty sure most beginners don't use them, but the main reason that they're used is to both protect your tablet from the oils on your skin, which helps keep your tablet clean, and it helps your hand to move more smoothly across the face of the tablet. I have a number of gloves at this point, so it wasn't a huge deal, it's just something that I thought I'd mention. And another thing more advanced digital artists should keep in mind is that there aren't any shortcut buttons on either the tablet or the pen. Again shortcuts aren't necessary and I'm pretty sure most beginners don't use them, but for me personally they're pretty essential to my workflow. The tablet that I use normally is a Helion tablet and I have this dial pad that I use when I draw, and luckily I was able to use it while also using the Q8W, which now is a good time to mention. It's always recommended to uninstall any previous tablet drivers before installing new ones, but being the adrenaline seeking risk taker that I am, I never do that, I just download the new one and hope for the best. <laughs> While I still wouldn't recommend following in my footsteps, I will say that both tablets I used worked without uninstalling my previous driver. If I was forced to uninstall my Helion driver, it wouldn't be a big deal, I would just have to use the shortcuts on my keyboard instead, but I just have a muscle memory for using this dial pad, so it would have taken me a little bit longer to make this drawing just because I'm not as used to the shortcuts on my keyboard, but it, it, it can be done, and using this dial pad is absolutely not necessary these are just a couple of things that I thought I'd mention. And the last con of this tablet is more likely than not user error, <laughs> but I wanted to mention it since I never was able to find a solution solution for it. Good speaking, Oliver. When I was tracing my traditional sketch, it ended up being wider than it was on the paper. In the tablet settings, you can adjust the drawing area on the tablet. And when I was playing with the settings, I couldn't figure out how to make what I was tracing in scale with the paper. The solution is probably in either the set screen area or screen proportion sections in the tablet. I wasn't able to figure it out, and I'm not even sure I played with both of them now that I'm recording this audio. <laughs> it's very possible I missed one of them. And I wasn't able to figure it out, but then again, I'm not as 
tech savvy as my mom would like to believe. So maybe one of you could help me out with that. <laughs> it's more of an inconvenience than a deal breaker. Even every single free to use art program I've used in my life has a transform feature. So after I was done tracing the artwork, I just scaled it down to the appropriate width. And again, someone out there probably knows the solution. I was just too dumb to figure out on my own, but I would rather suffer than ask anybody for help. So I just dealt with it. It really is such an easy fix after you're done tracing the line art. I remember when I was younger, I really wanted to get into digital art, but I didn't have a computer or a laptop until my later years of high school. And I really wish I had something like this available to me at the time. I remember struggling drawing on my phone with a combination of my finger and the worst, cheapest made phone stylist I got at the cash register of literally any random store. <laughs> As a professional, I can't see myself using this tablet very often, but I think newcomers for digital art should definitely give this tablet a go. Not only is the clear sheet a great feature for beginners, but the compatibility with smartphones and tablets allows anyone to get into digital art and not be limited by what technology they have. I don't think I've ever used a tablet I can recommend more to digital art beginners. It really makes the jump from traditional art to digital art a lot easier and if you are looking to buy a drawing tablet for the first time, whether it's for a computer or your phone, I can definitely recommend this one. I can't think of a smooth and gracious way to transition to the U1600 portion, so we're just gonna go into, into that one. Here's the U1600 tablet. <laughs> Unboxing this display tablet, we of course find the tablet itself, followed by the accessories included. There's a pen, which has two shortcut buttons and an eraser function on the back. There's the aforementioned drawing glove, the cords needed to use the tablet, additional nibs, user guides, and adapters for the plug, which I thought was a really neat touch. Every other experience with tablets I've had, you would select which country you're in before buying the tablet, and the correct plug would be sent with your tablet. So these adapters are, are a really nice inclusion. To use them, you plug the USB end into the American plug, and then you make sure the two prongs are folded in, and after that you take whichever plug you need, you find the two holes on the adapter, and then slide it over the two prongs while they're still folded up on the American adapter. They fit nice and snug, and so you don't have to worry about anything coming loose while you're drawing. And another incredible feature about this tablet is, like the Q8W, it can connect connect with your phone. And this is the first time that I've personally seen a display tablet that can work with your phone, and if I'm being honest, it was the sole reason I wanted to work with Yugi when they reached out to me, but I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself though. We'll get to the exciting phone stuff in a bit, but first let's connect it to my computer. For those of you who never used a display tablet before, you need to start by, of course, downloading the driver, just like the Q8W. Setting it up is extremely straightforward. In the driver settings, you can also adjust the pen buttons to your liking, and after that you need to plug in both USB ends and the HDMI cable. This does mean that if you are using a laptop that doesn't have an HDMI port, you will need to get an adapter. But from my experience, HDMI to USB adapters are fairly cheap, and this is just something that you should keep in mind if you're a laptop user. And there's also two USB ends. One is for making the pen on the tablet actually work, and the other is to power it on. While I was using this tablet, I was able to plug both of them into my computer, and most laptops nowadays should be strong enough to power on the tablet, but if yours isn't, you can always just sit near an outlet. And I forgot to mention this with the Q8W, but if you have multiple displays set up, you can choose which one the tablet affects. Again, both of these tablets worked perfectly with both of the programs I used in this video, and I was also able to use my Huey on dial pad with it. Again, <laughs> it's very recommended that you uninstall previous drivers. I just don't because I'm an absolute mad lad. <laughs> I use my dial pad very often because it makes using keyboard shortcuts that much easier, and this tablet doesn't have any buttons on it itself, but this is more of a personal preference and it absolutely isn't necessary. But other than that, drawing on this tablet was an amazing experience. The screen is anti-glare and was very pleasant to draw on. Everything was calibrated nicely, and honestly, I can't say I have any complaints. The most common reason that someone might be reluctant to buy a display tablet is because because of the price, and as someone who has a display tablet whose price was in the four digits, I can tell you that this one is highly affordable and well worth the price. The U1600 is currently listed at 299 US dollars, and there's also the U1200, which from my understanding is the same tablet but with a smaller screen. And the U1200 is currently listed at 199 US dollars, which is an incredible price 
for a display tablet of this quality. And we haven't even talked about what's, in my personal opinion, the best feature of the U1600, which is the phone compatibility. Never heard of a display tablet that can connect to your phone, so I was very eager to give it a go. The U1600 doesn't have Bluetooth support unlike the other tablet, and it didn't come with any cord to connect them. But other than that, connecting it to my phone was incredibly easy. I used my USB-C cord to connect my phone and the tablet, and then I plug the tablet into an outlet. And once they're both turned on, I just follow the prompts on my screen and it was set up very quickly. When it's connected to your phone, it looks just like a computer desktop, but it's my phone. <laughs> I haven't tried this out, but the website mentions that you can watch videos and movies with the tablet. There aren't any speakers on the tablet itself, but audio still plays from your phone while it's connected to the tablet. So it's nice to have if you would like a bigger screen to watch shows and stuff, and you don't have access to a TV or computer monitor. And since the layout of the screen is basically a just a desktop. Programs like Clip Studio look just like they do on a computer or laptop. And that was my first choice for a drawing program on my phone. And from what I've seen, the most typical complaint of the Clip Studio mobile app is that it isn't really streamlined for mobile. But since it's laid out exactly how it is on my computer, those complaints wouldn't really apply to me. But I couldn't figure out how to make the pen register as a pen instead of a finger. And if I'm being honest, I can't be bothered to upgrade my Clip Studio Paint account anyways. But Infinite Painter worked perfectly fine. <laughs> with it. And in fact, when I was testing out different programs on my phone to use, Infinite Painter wasn't the only program I tried other than Clip Studio, and every single one of those had the pen pressure register perfectly, so it was definitely an issue with Clip Studio. But if you are a Clip Studio mobile user, that's definitely something you should keep in mind. But like I mentioned earlier, Infinite Painter is the program I settled on. It seemed like a really great program for the price, so that's what I ended up making. And I really wanted to try and make a more finished drawing when using this tablet on my phone, just, I guess, just to show that you can <laughs> and that you don't need a computer. And I have to say, this tablet really blew me away. <laughs> there was a little bit of a learning curve to using it on my phone. After playing with it for a bit, it was not hard to use at all. When your phone is connected to it, you can use your phone as a sort of touchpad that you can use to pinch and zoom on your canvas and move it all around and stuff like that. And since Infinite Painter is a program made for mobile devices, you can also set shortcuts to things like the volume buttons, double tapping, and a long pressing of your pen. It took me a while to find the settings that worked best for me since this was a new sort of workflow and work experience for me. But before I even finished this drawing, I fell into a nice group of things. And fun fact, I made most of this drawing in my bed. <laughs> but even so, I still didn't even feel like I was drawing on my phone. And like I mentioned, there aren't shortcuts on this tablet, which as someone who uses a lot of shortcuts made things a little bit more difficult, but it didn't matter too much on mobile anyways, because I couldn't get the buttons on the pen to work. And I'm not sure if there's a way to do that, since the buttons are programmed by downloading the drive on their computer. Either way, it ended up not mattering too much, because once I got familiar with the program, it was not hard to switch between tools at all. And if I'm being honest, those are the only cons I found with this tablet, and they're all literally personal preference. It's all just because of my probably unhealthy love for keyboard shortcuts. <laughs> I was genuinely very impressed with this tablet, and it is something that I can recommend to anyone. Not only is it a great display tablet for newcomers because it can connect with your phone, but it's also at a quality that professionals can be happy with. And I've said it before, but I've tried out a number of tablets on my channel, but if I can be perfectly honest, those tablets are rarely used after I make the videos, but for this one I actually cleared out space in my desk drawer so I can use it more frequently, and I have used it outside of making this video, and I do plan on continuing to use it. I have made a number of sketches on it with my own time because it was just such a pleasant experience. Even though this is the larger size of the display tablet, it's still fairly portable and I can set up a place to drop pretty much anywhere in my house. And this tablet made me realize that a lot of companies are finding new ways to make digital art more accessible to anyone. No, I'm not talking about AI. I don't know how many times I've said it in this video already, but this is the first display tablet I've personally heard of that can connect to your phone. Meaning that for the first time in at least my life, pen tablets don't have to be something exclusive to professional fields or even reserved to people with access to a computer or a laptop. After using it, it's hard to believe that both sizes are under the $400 mark. It could definitely charge more, but Yugi, if you're watching this, I didn't say that. The prices are perfect. Please don't change them. <laughs> but before we take a look at the finished drawings, let's have a Patreon break. 
I'd like to give a quick thank you to all of my patrons for helping make this video possible, especially my tiers 3 and 4 members. Big shout out to Jules, Sammy Angle 27 The Tiny Artist, Jupiter Draws, and Yoko Arts, Sage Rosado, Isla, It's Dorky Arts, Anna, Nehaven, Kiera, Hikaru, Jamie, Creatively Anxious, Dazi Bones, Michael Sasha Rose, Red Beats the Time Traveler, Kaya Knight, Lauka 2, Ava Krupp, Clementine Jam, Lovely Siren, Jay Johnson, Vivi Martin, Bread, Fantastic Artist, Newly D, Joss, J Maximus, Bug, Planting Houses, Hen, Ravern, Gravity Drop, Blue, Daydream, Blue Devil 4, OMG It's Muppet, Sharu Amy, Sunset Lemonade, Danny, Corvid Dom, Kyron, Leia, Tina K, Donna Fangirl, Oswin, Luna Yoku, Sammy the Boy Draws, Athena Belladonna, K Manning, Anime Fan 110, Luxtorium, Yuinemon, Non Toxic, X Facat, Estellian Studio, Pixel, Cooper, Nathaniel Langerman, Deanna Riano, AJ, Rachel, Anik, Vampire. Eric Soup, Lenny, Yudo, Tired TM, Six Sad World, and Sam Hickey. Thank you all so much for the extra support, it means a lot to me. And if you're interested in becoming a part of my Patreon, you can find the link in the description box below. I hope you all enjoyed this video. I really genuinely like both of these tablets, and if you're a beginner, definitely pick up that Q8W. It's, it's a great tablet for beginners. And honestly, for anybody into digital art, beginner or not, get the U1600. It's perfect. I love it. <laughs> now, you want to thank Yugi again for sponsoring this video, or Yuji. I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong, but let me know which drawings you liked in this video. I had a lot of fun playing around with these tablets. And yeah, I don't have much else to say. I have, you can, you can follow me on other social media accounts. The links are in the description box below. Of course, you can find both of these tablets linked in the description box below. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.